Well, should I use the IRs or the analog cab sim? Yeah, should I use the IRs or the analog cab sim? Ah, I'll use both. <laughs> Yeah, so when you first look at the PLIR, like the front panel, um, maybe you tend to, like I certainly do most of the time, you go, all right, well, I have the IR loader that I could work with, or I have the analog cab sim, and never the two shall meet. But uh, this morning I was cutting some stuff, and I remembered when I first went to the Fryette shop, and Steve was working on the prototype of the PLIR, <laughs> he handed me some cans, you know, some headphones, and uh, handed me a guitar, and said, here, play. And uh, I banged on a couple chords and like, I just get this massive um, guitar sound happening. And I'm like, what's going on? And what he had done was um, he had a mixer there um, sitting on his desk and he had run the out of the IR loader into one channel and the out of the analog cap sim into the other and then panned him hard uh, left and right. Actually, this is your right and my left. Anyway, uh, I added a little verb and it was just massive. And um, I think this is because the IR loader and certainly, you know, the, the IRs that you choose to use, the IR loader and the analog cab sim just handle the frequencies in such, in a way that's different enough to really warrant exploration uh, for doing this kind of thing. Because it's really different. It's a different result than you know, say you normally mic a guitar cabinet with one microphone and then send that into, like I do a lot, I'll send that into a delay pedal to split it and make it stereo, but that's the same exact tone being um, split into stereo, where this is slightly different. It's, it's, it's not like having two amplifiers, but um, it might be like having two different speakers or two different cabs. Um, but it'll be up to you to experiment with the stuff and see what you think. So I'm going to show you how I set it up and then uh, I'll play a little bit of music and um, you can hear the sonic results for yourself. All right, so first things first, uh, working at home today, I don't have any amp heads or anything. Uh, in fact, my amp du jour is the Fryette GPDI, which is in fact a true guitar amplifier. It's a one watt amplifier, but it's got a power section and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm connecting that to uh, the power load and that's where the splitting happens. So connectivity is a piece of cake here. I'm going to take the amplifier out of the GPDI. I'm going to take the speaker out because I want to drive the PLIR a little bit. And I'm going to plug that into the amplifier in input. And then uh, because I'm feeling um, uncivilized, I'm going to take the IR unbalanced out. And I'm going to take the analog two unbalanced out. And I'm going to run those into my Apollo twin interface, which has two channels to accommodate this trick. So it's not super important because I highly doubt that many of you would have the exact rig I have, but while we're here, we might as well go over the settings that I'm using. All right, so for the GPDI, it's pretty simple. I'm in pit bull mode. Gain one is at 11 o'clock. Gain two is at one o'clock. I'm in more mode. Treble is at one o'clock. Middle is a little over nine o'clock. Bass is at noon. Uh, I'm in deep mode. The volume is at about one o'clock. And the dynamics control right around nine o'clock. Uh, I find it's really important to set this control. Um, it's very dependent upon what your pickups are sending to the front end of the unit. Um, for this example, I'm playing the strat neck single coil kind of thing. Um, so even with a low gain pickup, I'm still not engaging this much because uh, when you're really banging on the guitar, you'll see this red LED light up. And uh, I don't want it on all the time because for me, I'm not a real big fan of the amp, you know, completely uh, collapsing in on itself and compressing like crazy. So those are my settings for the GPDI. Okay, and for the power load, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. The IR that I'm using is Bank 1 Preset 4, which is uh, the Fryat Ether cab. It's a 112 loaded with the Fane F70G. Um, both the IR level and the analog level on my unit are pinned. Um, they're all the way up. Uh, the EQ settings are self-explanatory. Low mid is at one o'clock. High mid is at one o'clock. Emphasis is at noon. The air switch is engaged. Uh, as far as the reactive load uh, switches go, the low frequencies um, I'm set to flat and uh, for the higher frequencies I am set to bright mode. All right, so I have everything patched in through Logic and I'm ready to play this basic rhythm track that I'm talking about. Um, it's just neck pickup tone kind of thing. 
And uh, what we're going to do in post-production is I'll mute each track uh, so you can hear what the IRs have to say versus the analog cab sim. And then we'll, we'll pan them hard right and left, and then we'll listen to the amalgamation, and, and hopefully it'll be super cool. So um, let's give it a shot, and it goes a little something like this. really hope that this was informative and helpful and uh, maybe makes you think about your PLIR a little bit differently. Um, this just happened to be the piece of music that I was working on today. Um, so the tonal example was a little bit middle of the road, but hopefully you can see that, you know, you could really mess with the settings and, and uh, get pretty extreme and come up with some banana stuff if you really wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to get on down the road here and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And so please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon.